Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. Today we're going to be taking a look at some advanced motion tracking in motion and I'm going to try and break down all the fundamentals you need to know to enhance your track and get the best possible track. Now I will be the first to admit the tracker in motion is pretty bad, but I think with a little bit of finessing we can get a pretty good result in the end. So today we're going to be taking a look at this book that I motion tracked and next week I'm actually going to show you how to do this drawing on effect. So if that interests you make sure you subscribe and stick around because next week's going to be a really good one. With that being said let's go ahead and get started. So when you open up Motion, if you don't have this project browser, make sure you go up to File, New from Project Browser. From there, we are gonna actually push this import as project and select our optimized media here of our scene. So we'll just push import as project. So this is what your window should look like once you have imported your footage. Now the very first thing we're gonna wanna do is get some tracking set up. So just go ahead and select your footage here and go up to behaviors, motion tracking, analyze motion. And that will create these red tracking markers here. So let's go ahead and drag that to the very center of this tracking section. Now from there, we will jump on over to the inspector and you will see this analyze motion box here. So we have our first tracker here and let's go ahead and come down to this track one and click show. From here, we will have some really advanced options that we can work with that will hopefully get us a slightly better track. Now the ones I typically work with are the track size, search size, fail tolerance, and pretty much everything else remains the same. But I will explain to you what each of these does. So obviously position is where the tracker is, and then the track size, it's essentially the size of the pattern that it is searching for. So you can see that it's at the center of this tracking and it's got this kind of four square thing. But if we drag up the size here, we can get it to be pretty large and the largest you can go is 256 pixels. Now, if you use the slider here, it will actually only go up to 32. So if you wanna increase that, you just click on 32 and drag that on up. Now I like to leave this at around 32 if I can, but in this case, I'm actually going to increase this to around 50. And that's just to get a slightly better track on this book, which has got some advanced movement to it. So that'll be important. The next thing is search size. Now when it is 100% it's going to be searching within this frame here. If we increase that to say like 150%, it will actually increase this size by 50% and be searching outside of that. So it'll be searching out in here as well for that same frame. But if you can, I like to leave that smaller because it's less likely to jump from here to like one of these crazy corners or something. So let's just leave that at 100% for this particular scene. So fail tolerance, what fail tolerance is, so when it is tracking, it's constantly trying to decide if it's confident in the track that it has chosen. Now, the fail tolerance is the level, anything above this 75% level, it will keep the track. If it is below that, it will retry the track. So I actually like to leave this relatively high, if I can, um, to get a better track. So let's put this at 90%. So you would actually think that by setting this to 90%, it's allowing up to a 90% fail, but it's actually the other way around. So this is only allowing a 10% fail before it is retrying the track. The fail behavior. Now you have several options here. I will do my best to explain them. So the smart retry will attempt to track and if it doesn't find a good track, it will search in a slightly larger area of the original track. And if it still fails, then it will actually use the predict feature, which I'll get into in a little bit, to create an additional tracking marker and then it continues on to the best of its ability. And that one's honestly your best route, but there are some other options. So stop is does essentially that. It just stops the track if it happens to fail. What the predict feature does is it will predict based off the previous keyframes what the tracking marker is likely to do in the future. So it will search in the areas that it think the tracking should go before creating a tracking marker. Now predict and key 
does that except for it will actually create keyframes based on its predictions. So don't predict is going to keep the tracker in its exact same position searching for a match down the line without creating any keyframes or anything of that nature. And use existing keyframes is based on if you have to do some manual tracking, it will just use those keyframes to search for a trackable area. So hopefully that makes sense. If you want more information on what each of these behaviors does, and it's a slightly better explanation, you can go up to help and just type in fail behavior and then just look up the analyze motion controls in motion. Okay, so what we are going to be using today is the smart retry. So now that we have that set, we can also set the color of our tracking marker if we want. So this is particularly useful if you happen to be tracking like on a red background or something. So after we have our initial tracker, I'm actually going to drag up this look ahead frames. So if we take that up, the highest it will let you go to here is 10. But if you click on the 10, you can actually go beyond that. And we'll we'll do something like 40 today, which is probably a little bit higher than it needs to be. But it typically, not always, but it typically gives me a better track by doing that. Okay, so there are these other options here that you should know about. So auto zoom, all this does is when you click on it, it will create a larger zoom in size. So you see how large that red box is around the tracker. So if I let go and if I set this to the two times, now you can see how much smaller it is. So you can just use that according to whatever you need. The auto zoom mode, if you leave that on normal, it'll look how it does. If you leave it on contrast, you'll see it's got this very contrasty image. And this is really nice for finding high points of contrast in scenes that aren't as well laid out as this particular one is. And edges is a lot like contrast, except for it just shows you where the edges of the frame are. So I usually like to leave it on normal if I can, um, but I jump to contrast if needed. So let's go ahead and add one more tracker. And it's important to know that you are always going to need at least two trackers if you want any sort of rotation or scale on your track. So make sure you always add a second one. I like to do it at the same time so I can get the settings pretty well dialed in the same way. So all we're going to do is find another high point of contrast, which these corners are going to do a great job for us. We'll just select that and we can dial in these settings a little bit more. They're actually pretty good, but I might increase the track size just a little bit and we could increase our fail tolerance to 90%. Okay, so we have our two trackers here. Now, one thing I should have noted is if you are having a hard time finding a tracking point, if you select your tracker and push option while you have your tracker selected, it'll create all these red X's. And those red X's are actually points of high contrast. What's nice is if you drag over the top of it while still holding option, it will actually lock your tracker to it. So that's another great way to find points of high contrast if you are having a hard time finding those. Okay, so we have our two trackers all set and we can go ahead and just push analyze. So this is going to go through, do its motion tracking magic. Okay, so it looks like it did a pretty good job of tracking. You can just quickly scrub through and see how those white dots sit right on their given points, which is great. And uh, we're off to a good start. Now, one thing you can do is if you push command eight, that will bring up your keyframe editor and you can actually see all of the keyframes that the tracking went through and you could keep an eye out for anything that might look um, like it's crazy off. So sometimes when you track, you'll have one point that's like way up like that and you'll know, oh, that was a really bad track and you can actually go through, select it and delete it and clean up your track a little bit. But lucky for us, we actually have a pretty good track today. So I'm gonna push command eight to get rid of the keyframe editor and we'll drag this back down. So the next point is where things start to get interesting. So I'm actually going to import a clean frame I did of this very video. So I'll push command I to import and I've found my frame. So I will import that and I just cleaned it up in Photoshop and we're just gonna leave it as a merged layers and there you go. Okay, so what I like to do is I wanna line up this clean frame exactly on top of where the frame was that I, I originally got the frame from. So 
We'll select our page cleanup and let's just set the opacity to 50% and we will just scrub through until we find the exact frame and there it is. Now I'm going to select the optimized video here and I'm going to push M and that's just gonna leave us a marker so we know the exact point that I got this cleaned page from. And that's just really useful for getting a little bit more accurate track because it will be in the same point as it was originally. And the reason I didn't do a cleanup page from like say a further point here is I wanted to keep all the detail when the frame was really close up. Okay, so after we have this all lined up, let's go ahead and create a mask. So we will just come down here to the mask tools, go to Bezier mask. And we're just gonna create a selection around where all these lines are. So we can totally remove those. Now that we've done that, we can actually just bring up the opacity back and we can see that we have our cleaned frame. Now we still see some edges here with some color changes. So we're gonna easily clean that up by selecting our Bezier mask, going to mask, and we will just change the feather amount. And that looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's uh, getting the job done. Okay, so the next part is actually applying some motion to this because if you look now, it's it's moving but not with the page. So go ahead, select your page cleanup, go up to behaviors, motion tracking, match move. Now you will notice that the match move feature actually has some built-in tracking if you want, but the reason I like to do the analyze motion here uh, is because if you have multiple elements, you can apply the same track and you don't have to keep retracking everything. All we need to do to get the motion tracking into this match move here is drag our analyze motion over to that box. And it throws things off a little bit, which is a little bit annoying. Um, I don't know why it does this. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. So all you need to do to fix that is just drag it back to where it was. And that's looking pretty good. And then we will come over here in the match move settings and select the scale and rotation. And again, it's a little bit off. We can just fix that by scaling up our frame and we might have to fix the rotation. And this is just one of the annoyances that you have to deal with, unfortunately. But uh, but I think our track is going to work. And we'll just get that in the right spot here. I think we're doing pretty well. So we have our page here and you can see that it's kind of working, but it's getting off a little bit. So the number one fix for your track in motion if you have some weird stuff going on, is usually related to the anchor point of your frame. So I'm going to deactivate this so we can see um, underneath. And let me drag that down a little bit so it's lined up a little better. Okay, so if I deactivate that so we can see underneath, come down here to your arrow tool, click and go down to anchor point. With the anchor point, let me, re-enable this really quick. Okay, so if, if we go into our match move, you can see that the anchor of our match move is on track number one. So we want to line up the anchor point of our original page cleanup here, where the original first tracker is, which is right there. So I'm going to deactivate this. We know that the tracker is right here on the dead center. And this is Again, your number one way for getting a better track in motion. I don't know why it doesn't automatically do this. That would save us a lot of time. But if you ha are having some problems with your tracking, that is probably your best bet to fix it. Okay, so now we've got that and you can see that our track is actually sticking pretty well. So we are off to a great start. So now, after we've done that, let's go ahead and add in a little bit of a video element here of a drawing being created. So I'm just going to push Command I to import, bring in our draw test. This was a test, which is next week. What I'm going to show you how to um, actually create is to convert this video into a photo. So we have our draw test. Let's go ahead, go up to behaviors, motion tracking, match move, drag the analyze motion onto it, and we'll do rotation, scale, all of that jazz. And now select your draw test, go to your properties, and we're gonna apply a blend mode. I will use overlay because I set the gray 
to 50% gray so that it would vanish. And let's scale this down a bit and just get it lined up how we want it. Maybe it rotated a little bit. There we go. And then let's go ahead and change that anchor point once again. So we will deactivate the page underneath and we're actually lined up in a pretty good spot. That was lucky for us and reactivate that. Okay, so now if everything went according to plan, it should stick to that page pretty darn well. And I would say that's looking pretty great. So um, one other thing we might do so that kind of sticks out a little better on the page, go to filters, color, maybe add some curves here. We can just get a little bit more contrast out of this. Just so you can see it a little better on that page. And we might also add a Bezier mask to the outer edge and make it look like it was kind of drawn on here or something like that. Add a little bit. There we go. And now we've got our photo locked onto our page. So I hope that this little advanced look at motion tracking was helpful to you. There's definitely a lot of features that you can work with to enhance your track and I really recommend that if you have a track that's struggling you just play around with some of these settings and you might hopefully get a better end result. So if that was helpful, consider pressing the like button and make sure you subscribe so that next week you can see how I created this right on effect here, um, all within motion. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.